Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm excited to share with you a chess opening from the white side where in a best case scenario, you can get a completely winning position in just five moves of action. And in a scenario where you don't land that trap, you still get a position with open lines, dynamic opportunities, uh, and very clear plans of attack. Now this opening is called the Norfolk Gambit. It begins with a ready Nimso Larson. Don't worry about the names, I'm about to jump in and show you. Uh, and it was named Prisoner's Gambit because it was popularized by Cloud Bloodgood who you should look up his story, absolutely crazy uh, story of a gentleman who won a bunch of chess games in jail and became the highest rated player ever. Uh, and this opening was used successfully by none other than Magnus Carlsen himself, and he beat Vishwanathan Anand. So we're gonna look at all that and more. Let's get into the games, I hope you enjoy. So as always folks, my videos are split into multiple parts. There are timestamps on the video player for the theory section, and then there are two games against my subscribers. Uh, and uh, the moves for this are also in the description for you to copy paste into anything. Okay, knight to f3. You have to begin with knight f3. Uh, this prevents e5. So a lot of people are gonna be pre-moving uh, like this and you can just win this pawn, come back and you're just the pawn up. Now, for this opening, th the requirements are that black must begin with d5. You play pawn to b3, which will develop this bishop on this diagonal, very mainline position, and black plays c5 because black cannot control the center with the other pawn. Now you're already asking, well, what if that doesn't happen? Relax, that's why the theory portion is about 10 minutes long, 15 minutes long, we're gonna get into all that. Uh, c5, and now white plays the gambit, which is e4. So e4 just looks like a clean blunder of a pawn. Uh, and uh, black will take this pawn and attack the knight. And now this knight has a choice. Now, the main line that Magnus played is knight to g5. And the point is that you're immediately putting this pawn under pressure. Uh, but I have to show you the trappy line first. And the trappy line is knight to e5. Knight to e5 hits these two squares and doesn't do anything about this pawn. The trap here is if black locates the move queen to d4. Queen to d4 hits the knight and the rook. And this move loses. It's already a bad position for black if you play bishop to b2, but if black continues down the rabbit hole of taking this bishop, now black is lost and it's only been five moves. Black is lost because you play knight c3 and the queen is officially locked in jail and the queen has no way out. So if the queen tries to run away immediately, you have to give this check first. You have to give this check. Always keep this check in mind in these queen trap variations because the queen's escape square is covered and now you can swarm the queen and the queen is lost. If you just play knight to c4, then the queen can actually get out and then you're, you look like a bozo. So you have to give that check. There are multiple versions of how to give this check uh, if the queen tries to get out, but that's the general idea. The point is to box in the queen with the move knight to c4, but that's not the only idea. There's another idea here, which is if, for example, bishop e6, to stop knight c4, you have check, and then, for example, like this, and now the queen is boxed in. Remember this pawn move so that the queen cannot run away and the rook covers and rook a2 traps the queen on the very next turn. So this is how you can win with this opening in five moves. It's an amazing trap. Now, the problem is that knight e5 in and of itself is not a very good move at all. It's my second training game. You're gonna see me play it against the 1700. Uh, and uh, the point is that actually queen d4 is kind of tough to spot. Many people are just gonna do something like this, and now you're just playing a gambit down a pawn. The game plan here for white is to still put that bishop on b5, and it's to, um, it's to play queen e2, knight c3, and long castle. Now in the, tr in the practice game, I actually castle short, so it's like a, you know, totally gone wrong, but we'll, we'll, you'll still see kind of the, the game plans. Um, but knight to e5 is the trappy version. Right, the knight, knight e5, you're really relying on quick development, hoping that trap happens, but understanding that if it doesn't, you are, you are just a little bit worse, uh, and uh, you're gonna have to get this pawn back slower. Now, knight g5 is what Magnus played against Vishwanathan Anand uh, in a blitz or rapid game, uh, and uh, he just really showed how, how to do this. Now, if black plays a move like f5, which is actually practice game number one, uh, you can just develop like natural, bishop b2, this knight off into c3. This bishop could go to b5, but that's only in specific cases. More often than not, you're actually happy to just combine the bishop with the knight on c4, uh, when the knight goes to g5, the bishop on c4 is a very good friend of that knight. When the knight goes to e5, the bishop on b5 is the friend instead because you team up on d7. So it really depends where the knight is positioned for the light squared bishop to go after that. Now, knight to g5, Magnus uh, played like this. He played bishop c4, bishop b2. You'll notice he's not rushing. 
So Magnus is uh, finishing his development first. If his knight were to be attacked, then he would take. And in the game, we actually got a position that looked like this, where instead of long castle, Magnus went short side, took, and look at this position. This is like a dream uh, prisoner's gambit, where black did not put up a huge amount of resistance. And now watch Magnus swarm Vichy. He plays f4, cracking open the f-file for his rook, and not just his rook, his bishop as well is now open. He came in with the queen to h5, and we see the makings of a very powerful attack, right? Knight to d4 tries to block the dark squared bishop, but we have rook f4, and queen e5 is an exceptional move, setting up nasty dark square pressure, nasty pressure on f7, and Vichy fell apart. Uh, almost right away, he uh, he went for a light squared bishop trade, but here Magnus uncorked pure savagery with the move rook takes f8, knight to f6, and here Magnus missed an incredible mate. You can pause and try to find it. Magnus missed knight e8 check, king g8, and a queen sack in the corner. If the game ended like that, oh my god. I mean, just, oh my god, and it's just made. I mean, look at this. The knight covers just, it's just I mean, come on. Come on, this is absolutely amazing, and covers the queen from hitting the rook, but he won in a very similar fashion in about a move. He played 98, and he has a lot of different checkmates coming. A 20-move win over Vishwanathan Anand, one of the greatest players ever, five-time world champion, from the Prisoner's Gambit, from DE4, Knight G5, and all these moves are in the description. Obviously, I'm not gonna spend an hour analyzing the game, because you have all the moves. I'm, this is, I'm giving you this introduction so you can go and look at that game in a separate tab and actually study it very slowly at your own pace. But here's the thing, um, knight g5, the way Magnus played this, is actually in, ma in many ways very straightforward. Uh, if your opponent plays f5 uh, and tries to do something like this, typical moves, bishop b2, bishop c4, you have the added option of gambiting a second pawn, like for example, uh, knight f6 and maybe d3. You have the option of doing this, gambiting two pawns and getting your bishops out. I personally am not a, not a massive fan of this, but you can and you have like very open lines. Uh, and the position is honestly very fun. Uh, so, crazy gambit. Prisoner's gambit with e4. You have knight e5, the trap variation. You have knight g5, the Magnus variation. Uh, and then from there, you have to build your experience. Now, what if you get to this position and they don't take the gambit? That, yeah, I mean, totally. That's, that's how chess goes, right? Like, that's gonna happen. Because there is just so much infinite possibility of what black can do, you just have to have a development scheme in mind if you don't get your gambit, right? That's, that's how all chess works. So, for example, if you don't get your gambit, you know, maybe you insist on it one more time. And then when they don't do it, okay, you know, maybe you just develop. Bishop comes to b5 with check, you trade it, you, you take in the center. So just hypothetical, take, take, no more gambit, castles. Okay, now you have to play chess. I'm sorry. I know you're watching a chess video, but at the end of the day, you have to play chess. You know, maybe rookie one, put pawns in the center, develop your pieces to natural squares. The gambit only works in that specific set of moves. You cannot make the gambit work by reinventing the wheel. So that kind of takes me back even before the gambit. What happens if they just play knight f6? Okay, then you have to play a ready Nimso Larsen. So your backup to getting the specific move order gambit, your backup is, okay, if I don't have an opportunity to play the gambit, then I just develop. Bishop to b2, c5. Now, Bloodgood used to play this, which is like a turbo gambit. You don't have to do that. You can sort of hope to God they take with the pawn, and now you're actually back to the regular gambit, right? But if the pawn on c5 is not there, like something like this, then just play chess. So what you'll do here is you'll play e3, your d and c pawns will go to the middle, and now you're just playing a ready. I mean, you just have a completely normal opening. You just... Well, you're not getting something as fun, but I, I have to show you what to do in case you, get, you don't get your gambit. Guess what folks do? They, they watch the video, they try to play the gambit, maybe they get it, but if they don't, they're like, well, you never, you never told me how to win in five moves when they don't take the gambit. Listen, I, I'm doing my best, you know? At the end of the day, your opponent can start the game uh, like this, you know? Like, putting every pawn on the sixth rank. I cannot make a video like this. I mean, at some point, it's in your hands. So, uh, knight f3, play a ready, play a Nimso Larsen ready if you don't get the opportunity against c5. Um, and if you do, destroy them with the Prisoner's Gambit and, uh, you know, follow the lead of Magnus Carlsen with this move Knight to uh, knight to G5. Uh, obviously, Queen D4 here, this doesn't quite work anymore because your Knight doesn't have, right? So you would do something like this. Uh, and go play around with the moves in the description. Uh, I am uh, including them for you to uh, do your own digging and do your own research. It's time for some practice games. Let's go.
Okay, so it's it's time for game number one. Uh, my opponent for this round is rated 1100. My second opponent is going to be rated uh, 600 points higher, so 1700. So here comes knight f3. Um, and uh, for this game, I'm, I'm going to play the more correct version of the gambit. For the next game, I'm going to play the trappier version of the gambit, uh, which, is, uh, which is knight e5. So for this version, I'm going to be playing c5, e4. Now, of course, I've, I've asked my opponents to oblige to play into the first three moves uh, because, um, because I... I mean, as I said already in the intro, if you just get a normal game and you don't have an opportunity to play this gambit, okay, whatever, you know, you just... But uh, the, ga the gambit is what... Uh, okay, f5. Yeah, f5 is quite an interesting move uh, because it's, uh, it solves the problem temporarily of your pawn. I'm going to play bishop b2. Uh, probably, it's interesting, f5... Um... Oh my gosh, my opponent blunders right away. Queen h5 check. Oh god. Queen h5. Oh god. Now king d7. Oh god. But you know, it, 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 it's not so simple. Oh no, no, no. I actually think it's... Uh... Wow. Wow. Knight, uh, knight f7. Knight f7. I was thinking knight f7 in here, but that doesn't work. Yeah, knight f7. And now we have a fork. But queen f5 is coming, which is even worse. So here, if I just take the rook, so I was thinking I had knight e5 here, but king goes to d8. So maybe bishop b5, but then knight c6. <laughs> it's, it's kind of unfortunate. I'm just, I'm just never able to... Uh, I could play bishop b5, knight c6, takes, takes, and then take on f5. Uh, but I don't know if I have to do that. I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to play queen takes f5. So e6 now is the best move. Uh, I still can't take the rook. Uh, I can play knight e5 check. I can also just go back to f4 or maybe queen g6. Queen g6, maybe knight e7. Ah, this is blech. What the heck is this? Uh... What the heck is this? Maybe queen f4. I mean, it's, com it's, it's, it's completely winning. I'm, I'm, I'm happy we're completely winning. I'm just, uh, I'm annoyed that there's no way to just take the rook and not lose my queen. Um, so. Okay, knight f6, my opponent chooses not to engage with my queen, so I'm just going to be a rook up. Okay, but my opponent is 1137, and there you go. That's one of the... Yeah, bishop d6 is, uh, is actually quite a reasonable move. Um... I'm thinking to play, to just include this. Let me, let me just very quickly play this move. Uh, and uh, I will actually make this trade just to remove a piece from the board. And uh, let's see, queen e3 looks reasonable. I'm going to probably lose the knight no matter what. I, can, I guess I can try to trade the bishop. I was thinking to move my queen and take the knight, but maybe bishop e5 is even more reasonable. But is there some g5 move? No, I'm going to play bishop e5. So I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to remove my opponent's more active pieces, and I think trading my bishop for the bishop is better than trading my bishop into the knight. Now, uh, yeah, these pawns are quite, quite bad. I can take c5. Probably this is just the easiest thing to do for now, and then I will develop my knight in castle, uh, and I will be... Um, I will be okay. Okay, I mean, that's, that's actually a very reasonable thing to do. I'm still going to develop my knight. Actually, cutting me here is very smart. That's one of the reasons I should have castled, but I decided to just take a pawn. Uh, I, I think I can even castle long. I'm not, I'm not super worried about the weakness of my king. Nothing can really get in here. The black queen, but uh, I don't know how the heck you're going to do that with my queen here. You cannot play rook b5. Oh, I missed queen a7 because I was so focused on... Yeah, queen a7 is just a free pawn, but bishop comes back. It's not, it's not, it's not super simple. Uh, I can trade knights. I can also take on e4. Now I'm threatening to get in here. When I get in there, uh, I will be taking everything. So I will take this with check, I will take this with check, and I will take the bishop as well. If you play queen f8, I will trade queens, and then I will play knight c5, fork you, and I will pick up a lot of material. So for our first excursion with... Oh, Gotham predicts the future. So for our first excursion of this opening, I would say definitely successful. Um... Oh, well, my knight is a bit stuck. It's kind of annoying. I wonder if I can... Um... Okay, here what you should do is you should not play passively, first of all. Uh, you, you, you really should try to trade rooks. 
If they take on g2, you can actually use the threat of a trade against them. So he will continue to take my pawns. And I will get in there. And again, when you're a rook up, you actually have to use the rook that you are up. You can't just have the rook on d1. So uh, that might mean like rook e1, for example. Just don't hang a fork. Just don't hang a fork on d3. But like you, you, you need to get your rooks involved. So I'm gonna, gonna use my rooks. That's not, a, that's, that's not a bad move. I was thinking to pin here. Uh, but I actually think I'm gonna cage the knight. If, if I pin, there is check. So that doesn't exactly work. It looks nice, but it does. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cage the knight so it can't really get out. Check, king b2. My king is, like I said, always very safe over there. Uh, and uh, yeah, opponent is gonna run out of moves. I mean, ultimately what I'm gonna do is build a mating net. That's what I want. So I want the king to not have any squares available. So I'm thinking c4 and some sort of checkmate, uh, but how? Let's begin with c4 to take away the king's like remaining square. My rook is hanging, so it's never too late to hang a rook. Maybe just rook g6. I guess I give away the escape of the back rank, but uh, to the seventh rank, but I'm gonna get the pawn, I will get the other pawns and, and we are just calmly winning. So check. Again, you can worry about losing this pawn, but it, there's really nothing scary about it. If king c7, I will play rook c6. We force the king to the back rank. I can't actually give one of these checks. That would hang a rook very confidently. Yeah, I saw this. It's a, a bit of a pain, I guess, to win the position. I guess I can give this check. So now we force the king here. And I just, I gotta get, I gotta get this knight away. <laughs> this knight is annoying. The rook f6. I'm not, um, I'm not too worried about this. Again, king can always hide, can always attack the rook as well. And uh, I think that's, ah, I'm going to hide my king. I think this is even easier. Just don't even get involved in any checks. And uh, there you go. Knight to d4, uh, there must be a mate. I mean, just simply has to be a mate here. Rook f7, this is insane. How is there no checkmate? Now opponent is trying to bother me. Okay, you know what? Check here. This is like a tactics exercise. Knight a4, king a6. I mean, just unbelievable. The, ki the king is surviving. Wow. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna force a knight trade. I'm just going to force a knight trade. I mean, I, I just, I really thought I was going to checkmate here with the rooks and the knights, but uh, this is much simpler. Two rooks will never beat, uh, I mean, will never be beaten by one. I'm going to play c5. This will cage the king. There is now no more escape. Rook e7. I, I mean, I guess my opponent will play on, but uh, maybe I will cut out the rest of this portion of the, of the video. This is going to take a, a little while to convert, but... Hopefully I know how to checkmate. Okay, we get the king. I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna queen. And I'm, you know what? Just for bad manners toward the end, I'm gonna promote to a second rook. And it's mate. And we win the first game very quickly before we play the second one. Uh, F5, uh, bishop b2 is good. Uh, it's completely reasonable. Bishop c4 is also okay. Uh, but uh, the idea obviously is that when, when this occurs, now this is even stronger because uh, e6 doesn't cover and doesn't hit the knight. So there's, there's opportunity to even immediately cash out. All right, on to the second game. Hoping to play in the more tricky fashion because as I said in the introduction, uh, I feel like higher rated players might find this queen d4 uh, idea, so b3. As we've discussed, knight f6 will just lead to you know, a bishop b2 position and a regular, you know, re relatively normal game. Uh, so I'm going to go for e4 now, uh, and uh, I'm going to play for knight e5. Now, again, uh, uh, th this is a very tempting move. Uh, <laughs> if a person, yeah, so my, my opponent uh, doesn't play it, um, I could obviously, like, really insist on the move occurring. Uh, but instead, you know, if your opponent has made it quite clear that, that they're not going to be taking the gambit, uh, then there's, there's not much you can do. You can try to leave this open for one more move, but uh, it's prob probably better off to just play bishop b2, bishop b5. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play bishop b2. 
Uh, and then I'm going to play bishop b5. Now, again, as I've mentioned, knight e5 is inherently not the best move. It's got, like, one massive trap. Uh, but uh, we can play this with bishop coming to c4, which might even be the better way to start because right now black can play bishop to f5 uh, and develop the bishop like that. But there are still ideas, you know. If the bishop comes to f5, oh, wow, knight d7 is a, an interesting move. Maybe, maybe quite a good one, actually, to try to trade my knight off. Uh, I might go bishop b5. a6 there is, uh, a6 is a thing. So I'm going to go bishop b5. This has to be played. Uh, and, uh, yeah, now I think I'm just going to take on d7. And then if bishop takes, I'll castle. And we are just very much a pawn down here. This is not, uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we haven't reinvented the wheel. We are just clearly a pawn down. Uh, but um, that's the danger of putting the knight on e5. But it's, I will show you maybe how to play from a slightly worse position uh, if your gambit doesn't pay off in the trappy form. But you have game one as reference for if uh, yeah, you, 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 don't, you don't play for cheap tricks. Uh, knight c3 is a thing again. Queen e2 is very much a move as well. Uh, bishop b5 is not scary because we just have c4. Uh, I expect bishop d6. Bishop d6, I might play, uh, I might play knight c4. Yeah, so I, th I think I'm just going to bring my knight back to c4 to try to win this pawn back. This is very much what this opening is kind of about anyway. Uh, is, this, is, this, is this winning this pawn back on e4? Did I say e4 or c4? can't even remember. Uh, b5 now, actually, not, uh, not a bad move either, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to play for f3. So I'm going I'm to play this in a pure gambit style. Try to... Uh, Tried to sack a pawn to get this. Uh, certainly white is, is worse, as, I, as I've said. Um, but such is life when you play uh, for, for, for silly traps. So it's obviously better to play knight g5. Okay, this is hanging. Yeah, bishop c6. Is, my opponent's playing uh, very well right now. I mean, just, just honestly. Oh, this is a blunder because there's bishop takes h2 and knight g4. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play queen h3. But I have, you know, I have like kind of menacing ideas in the long run. I have open line here, open line here. So does my opponent. I mean, it, it, can't, be, it can't be understated. They also have a, a very, very reasonable position. Uh, okay, b5, yeah, we, we, we expected that. Knight e5 is an option here. Uh, I think I'm good. I mean, knight e3 is also an option. I like the idea of knight e5 because I can at least remove one of my opponent's bishops from the game and then... And then if my opponent is not careful, I will get my bishop out, my knight out, my rooks, and I actually don't have that bad of a position, especially with, with all these open lines comes responsibility for black in the sense that castling is actually very dangerous. Uh, like, short castle will always be met with an opening of the pawn structure, and then with my, with my open rooks and my queen, it's not such an easy position. And by playing like this, you probably won't castle queenside, right? It's just... I mean, I don't know. I don't know how brave my opponent is feeling. So now, knight c3. Uh, I finished my development. I'm still a pawn down, but again, good luck to my opponent choosing a side to castle. Actually, queen g3 was a, was a very reasonable move to attack the g7 pawn. And then if castles, bishop f6 is winning. Okay, so this is an attack here. Uh, my gut is just to quickly play d3 and not really worry about anything. My other gut is to play queen g7, but, but, I, but I, I think that it's better to just create this little barrier so... Nothing can, uh, nothing can happen. Now, we are, still, we are still very much a pawn down. I keep saying, we're, we, we are down a pawn. However, black's natural moves will slowly run out because at some point you realize your king is in the middle and the other guy has active, active rooks. And that's sort of the entire purpose of the opening is that if black doesn't defend correctly, and black is a very strong player. I mean, black is 1800, okay? I once did the math, 90% of my viewers are 1600 or lower, 90%. So, okay, so there we go. I mean, the, the, the very difficult decision to castle has been made. Um, I mean, we, we, we might just be winning very soon. So let, let's just calculate this. So I want to play bishop f6. I also really want to play rook f6. Uh, rook f6 takes and queen h4. Looks incredibly strong, I have to say. In fact, it might, it might, might just win, and then my next move is bishop. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Rook takes f6. And now, queen h4, incredible move. And I'm threatening just bishop f6 and queen g5 mate. And if black plays king g7, I have queen g5 check. 
and then bishop takes f6. So the second that my opponent castled, they just got completely annihilated. I mean, just uh, immediately, uh, just on the spot. They, they had no chance. Uh, here, black can I suppose... I was looking for checks. There are no checks to my king. And if black plays rook e8, I will just play bishop and queen and mate. I mean, it's just, it's just immediately game over. It's, it's actually it's quite, quite, quite insane uh, how, just how fast the position falls apart for black. So even in the worst type of gambit, the, literally the worst version of this gambit where we are just pawned down by playing f3 and opening up our lines like that, it just shows you really how, how potent and, and dangerous this is. Um, yeah, so this will, be the, um, this will be the final game of the video. And, um, you know, that's... Uh, yeah, king g7, but, but, now, but now, like I said, queen g5. So, queen g5 check. And this is very brutal. This is, you have to see. You have to see this check. And now you, you kick the king away. Uh, and uh, bishop takes f6. Now, opponent has no moves. I mean, bishop f6 is coming no matter what. Um, so, game over. Uh, let's just quickly analyze. Uh, first of all, I just want to make sure that that, that win there was the, was the right thing. So rook f6, pawn f6. Uh, oh, that's absolutely incredible. Uh, queen h4 doesn't win on the spot because of rook d4. Oh my goodness. I thought I just have knight e4 here. Why, why, what? My takes, takes... Oh my god. Oh, oh, you just take again. I just saw this and I was like, oh, I'm in the clear. Oh my goodness. I actually have to play queen g3 check first. Because king h8, queen h4, and now this is a check. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh wow, I had to give the check. Oh, rook d4 is incredible. Danger levels. Rook d4. Wow. Okay, it was winning, but not queen h4 first. I have to force the king away. Oh, that's, oh, that's beyond me. So hopefully that was a fun deep dive into the prisoner's gambit. Uh, you saw Magnus Carlsen use it successfully. He obviously did not end up in jail, uh, but he might as well because that game was a murder. Uh, and I showed you how to play the gambit in an aggressive way uh, to defeat a player who was rated 1100. But I also showed you how to play it when things go wrong and you don't actually get the trap. You get a worse position, but you're still able to create open lines of attack against your opponent. And don't be like me and think you have a winning tactic. Uh, actually, make sure you have a winning tactic. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video. Get out of here.